Hey guys, it's Megan and today I want to bring you my June favorites. So all the products that have been making me really happy in the month of June 2019. And I'm just noticing I'm sounding kind of nasally. Allergies have been kicking my butt this month. I could not have survived this month without Claritin D and even still I'm slightly dying. So excuse my even extra more extra nasally voice than I normally have. So um, I have some repeat favorites. I have a bunch of new stuff, some books, and I want to start out with something random but that I've absolutely loved. It's these reef flip-flops that I got at Kohl's. They have like a sparkly thong. Is that what you call them? <laughs> um, like this part is sparkly and they're a little bit of I don't know if you would call it a wedge, but it's like thinner and then it gets thicker. And what I really love about these is that they have like a arch support. It like contours to your body. I think it literally says on here, like contouring. And these were kind of expensive. I got them at Kohl's when we had like a 30% off and Kohl's cash and all that stuff. You guys know all about how Kohl's suckers you in. But I've heard of Reef flip flops before and I just never had seen them and never was able to try them on. What draw drew me into them first is that the part that goes between your toes is made of fabric. So I have very sensitive toes or feet in general, I think. Um, and so I can never wear like Javianas or any flip flops that have like the hard plastic between my toes. It's so uncomfortable. I hate it. I stopped buying those in like middle school. I remember in I think sixth grade, sorry if you could hear my stomach growling. Um, in sixth grade, I was obsessed with Aeropostale and I had like a shirt that had a whale on it. I had had the matching colored pants and then my flip-flops had the whales on them with like the blue little um thong piece and they had like the thick plastic in between my toes that was the worst experience of my life as a sixth grader and sixth grade is pretty rough either way so after that i never bought flip-flops with that thick plastic between the toes because it's just not worth it to me it's not comfortable at all these are so comfortable because of that and also because they have that contouring um, like base to it. So it's not just like a flat flip flop. And I have very high arches to my feet. So all of those things just make my feet really happy. They're really comfortable on and they're just awesome. So I'll link those down below for you guys if you have like flip flop, very specific things that you look for in flip flops as well because I am kind of like an extra queen when it comes to flip-flops because I just can't deal with anything but the best. So those are awesome and very comfy to wear as you're walking places. I wouldn't wear them like walking in New York City or Las Vegas. I'm thinking of all the places that I've been walking a lot. Like I wouldn't wear them to Disney World. Oh my god no. But I wouldn't wear any flip-flops to those places. You know what I'm saying? But those are very comfortable for day-to-day -day wear. Oh my gosh they'll be great at the beach. So can't wait to go to OCMD. I am going to OCMD this year. I've been getting so many messages and comments from you guys which just touches my heart so much. Like you guys are so sweet when you ask if we're going to OCMD. Will there be vlogs? Yes and yes, we are just going in September instead of like during the real summer months this year. So definitely stay tuned for that. We will be having plenty of OCMD goodness later um, this summer. Okay, on to two repeat favorites. I really enjoy seeing when people like the same stuff from month to month. Like I know a lot of bigger YouTubers that I watch, well, they don't really even do favorites videos anymore, but when they do, it seems like it's always new products, like, completely, and I don't know if they are really still loving the products that they mentioned in the past, and I feel like I get into that same thing with my videos. I recommend a lot of new stuff to you guys, but I want to mention when products are so stand out that I like am still in love with them to this day. So the It Cosmetics Matte CC Cream is phenomenal. I'm really really impressed with this formula, the longevity of it on my skin, how it keeps my skin looking natural but still rather matte throughout the day. 
I wore this the whole time I was in Las Vegas and it was perfect. It lasted through the heat. The heat of Las Vegas is next level. It's not humid, but it's so hot. Like, <laughs> I... I forgot how hot it is in Las Vegas, but this lasted so well throughout the day with all of our walking in and out of casinos and stuff. It did a really great job. And then it also lasted throughout the sweatiness of the Enigma concert, the Lady Gaga pop concert that we went to and we were on the floor and we were like literally this close to Lady Gaga. Seriously, dream come true on that trip. That was the most <laughs> incredible concert experience like both nights the enigma and the jazz and piano show i saw lady gaga announced extra residency dates for next year and i am so so tempted to go again i don't know if it's in the cards for me but if you have the chance to see either of her shows or both if you're in las vegas when she's performing you have got to go it is just phenomenal so anyway at the enigma show i was dancing i was screaming i was crying it was an emotional roller coaster and this stuff lasted the whole whole time and i didn't look like a psycho by the end of the night so thank you it cosmetics because like any other foundation i swear it would have just been dripping down my face and this just lasted and it was awesome also during our Vegas trip, I took the Natasha Denona mini, uh, what is this, mini star palette. This is an awesome travel palette. I know I mentioned this when I went to Jamaica as well, but I love that it has the two matte colors and then three shimmers that you can do a lot of different looks with. This is like all I really need for traveling right now. And... I, looking at this, I wouldn't have thought that, but it honestly is just like a perfect palette because it has those crease colors, like a deeper brown, and then it has like lid shades. It's pretty awesome. And for $25, it's a really great value for the quality of the eyeshadow that you're getting. So not really interested in many of her other palettes because they're just a lot of colors that I wouldn't use. The only other mini palette I'm interested in is the nudes. That is really, really beautiful, I think, for an everyday palette. So I might pick that up around my birthday. I don't know. I'm still deciding. A eyeshadow look that I have just done over and over and over again lately is what I'm wearing on my eyes today. Let me give you a little zoom in action. I haven't done that lately with my fancy camera. So this is a combo with a few random products that I've had laying around. So I start off with the Laura Mercier Rush Cream Shadow Stick. And when we were in Las Vegas, my mom actually bought this too because she had thought about it when we went to Sephora for the VIB sale. I hope you guys can see. Oh yeah, there we go. So my mom thought about getting this shadow when we went to Sephora for the VIB sale, but she decided to get, I think, Amethyst instead. Let's see. Let's get refocused camera. Thank you. Um... But when we were in Las Vegas, I had a Sephora $100 reward. Thank you, Sephora, for finally doing rewards like that. Um, and I was like, Mom, like, find something that you really like. And so she picked this out. And it just reminded me that I haven't really used it very much since I bought it. So I put this down first on my eyes. And then I used a shadow that I really have not gotten any use out of since I bought it. It's the Sydney Grace The Greatest Gift. And this is like a pink green duochrome. I don't know how well you can tell it in the camera, but this color on top of Rush is magic. So that is what I'm wearing on my lids today. And I just think it's so glowy. It's so different. And I think with the Rush underneath, it pulls more bluish duochrome as opposed to the green and then I did the Stila Indigo eyeliner because it just pulls out the blues even more. So that is the eyeshadow look I've been loving. If you happen to have both of those products, the Rush and Greatest Gift from Sydney Grace, it's a really pretty combo. Even if you don't have the Sydney Grace one, even though I would recommend it, any like kind of duochrome-y color looks really cool over Rush because I noticed that using Rush by itself, I 
it would get like dry and crumbly almost and when my mom uses it that doesn't happen so I don't know if it's the one that I got um or if it's just like a me issue I'm not sure because I do like to layer up the color so maybe if I just did one layer it wouldn't get like that but this combo is so pretty so that whoa zooming in more let's go the other way <laughs> So that is the eyeshadow look that I've really really been enjoying I just think it's like a little different a little fun and using products that I haven't got a lot of use out of Okay on to like some skincare things This lip balm. Oh my god is so incredible the fresh sugar lemon hydrating lip balm I got this sent to me from fresh a few months ago, and I have used so much of it. Um, it is like a shallow pan, so seeing pan on here isn't like that impressive, but the scent of this is so good. It is just like a lemon dessert, like lemon cookies with like the powdered sugar on them. Oh my god, those are so good. I haven't had those in so long. This is so nice. Like, I love it mostly for the scent, but the formula is really nice. It's pretty thin for, like, a balm like this. It's very glossy. I just use it at night before I go to sleep, but the scent is amazing. I look forward to using it every night, and I just love it. I know they have a caramel one, too, so that one intrigues me, but... Probably if I were to repurchase, I would get the lemon because it just makes me so happy. I really love it. Another fresh product that I got with my Sephora 100 point um, or $100 credit is the Rose Deep Hydration Sleeping Mask. I wanted this so, so badly during the VIB sale, but this is $50 and even with 20% off, like $40 is still a lot of money for one product. I'm really trying to do better about like thinking about the value of something as opposed to like, oh, it's 20% off. Like still, it's a lot of money. So I got this for free, which I can't complain about. And it's a two step process so this is like a jelly essence you put this on first and then you have this gorgeous lightweight but really really hydrating moisturizer this is lovely it smells like their soy face cleanser which does not smell like rose to me like it says rose but to me it smells like cucumber it's very like if you like the fresh soy face cleanser scent this is exactly what it smells like it is beautiful I'll see how long this lasts me and I'll consider getting it if I still feel as wonderful as I do about it right now because it really really hydrates the skin without being heavy which is what I really like about it for this time of year especially now that it's getting really humid and it's actually been beautiful lately which knock on wood I'm appreciating every second of that but um, most of the time in the summer in Pennsylvania it's so so humid and so things like this where it's like a light but hydrating is really important so that has been awesome and I think I enjoy it even more because I got it for free <laughs> do you guys ever feel like that um it just is so satisfying to know like my points went to a product that I really wanted another product that I got with my free Sephora money is the Sol de Janeiro glow motions Copacabana bronze glow oil this is so cool as a fair person I would never have looked at this but a girl that I found on YouTube I'm forgetting her name right now I will put it down here um, and I'll link her below but she has a wonderful YouTube channel and Instagram where she reviews a lot of products and she was talking about like underrated products and she mentioned this one specifically and in the Copacabana bronze color she mentioned that I guess before it didn't have a pump now they do come with pumps that I don't understand why it never it didn't come with a pump before because I don't know how you would like pour this out that would be a disaster but she has fair skin and she recommended this and that's when I was like whoa I need to swatch this next time I'm at Sephora so when we were in Vegas I went to Sephora and I swatched this and so it looks like molten bronze lava and it looks like a little scary at first if you have fair skin but as you blend it in and it does smell really nice kind of like I don't know it's like gourmand as you blend it in it really shears out and it just gives you a slight 
bronziness like you can tell this part of my hand doesn't have it and this part does and you can see it just gives a very very slight bronze with a little bit of a glow it's gorgeous i wore this when we were in vegas and i thought it was lovely it's really hydrating but not oily like it's it's almost like a dry oil after like you blend it in and it didn't make me feel like sweaty or anything like sometimes when i put a lotion on and then i'm going like out somewhere i feel like oh god why did i put that lotion on i feel really like it's heavy it's sweaty like all this stuff <laughs> this did not make me feel like that so I just thought this was a really cool product, something that I definitely would not have looked into if I wouldn't have heard someone recommend it. And so if you've been curious about like a nighttime or daytime, something that you can put on day to day if you want that bronzy glow but you don't want to maintain like self tanning or things like that, this is perfect because it just lasts until you shower and it really is natural looking. I am so impressed with it. So I can't wait to use this more throughout the summer. I know I'm going to get tons of use out of it like when I wear like sundresses and when we go to Ocean City and stuff. So this I think is something really cool that I wouldn't have looked into otherwise. This new First Aid Beauty product, the KP Bump Eraser Body Scrub, really, really shocked me how good it is. So this was sent to me from First Aid Beauty and I was so impressed to see a product that literally applies to a problem that I have, which is keratosis pilaris, KP, little like bumps. I get them on my upper arms, but they can be anywhere on your body. And it's just like a buildup of keratin. And the only way that I found to maintain that is either using like, um, like Polish Choice AHA, um, like toners, and then body scrubs as well. And this is actually kind of a mixture of both of those things. So it has 10% AHA. Um, in the ingredients, it has glycolic acid, lactic acid, um, different acids, and then it is a physical exfoliant as well. So I'll just show you a little dollop. So it's like this gray um, kind of color, and it is very scrubby like I'm gonna have to wash this off my hands it has very very fine scrubbing particles and so I use this once a week I don't think you need to use it much more than that let me actually wash this off before I talk about it I only use this once a week and that's really all I would recommend because it does have very strong exfoliating particles and the chemical exfoliants as well and it keeps my upper arms so so smooth like I can tell usually on like Fridays because I pretty much always use this on Saturday um, on Fridays I can tell a little bit of bumpiness but then the second I use it on Saturday morning in the shower it is smooth pretty much the whole rest of the week so this is very 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 impressive to me if you have keratosis pilaris and you've tried everything like me this is something I would really, really recommend. Like seriously, I was skeptical about it, but it has really impressed me and I've been testing it for about a month now um, because I wanted to be really sure before I mentioned it, but it is definitely a favorite and it'll last a really, really long time because I use a very small amount just on like my arm area. And so yeah, I am just really impressed with this and thank you to First Aid Beauty for sending that to me. Something else I've been trying out is like purple shampoo and conditioner. And so I have um, my highlights still going strong in later um, July, I'll have another hair appointment. I'm trying to decide if I want to add more highlights what I want to do so if you have like an opinion if you think I should go a little bit later or just maintain this let me know I might put in a few more just for the hell of it because I think it's kind of fun um, but it has been interesting to try out different purple shampoo conditioners and masks so John Frieda sent these to me the Fi violet crush for blonde shampoo and conditioner and I've been testing them out and I'm very skeptical about um, like shampoos and conditioners that claim to 
prevent brassiness or help with brassy hair. I would say that the shampoo does the most work because it is like a deeper like violet purple color and then the conditioner they're basically like the color of the bottles even though the bottles aren't see-through this is just like a light lavender color and it does say on the bottles that the shampoo neutralizes stubborn brassy tones in one use for cool cooler brighter blonde and then the purple conditioner just says restores and moisturizes blonde hair so it's the purple conditioner isn't really depositing any color the shampoo is what since it has that really rich like blue violet purple tone that really like counteracts the orangey tones of brassy blonde hair so i would say if either of these products interest you i would get the shampoo and i use this about two times a week i would say and then just use my normal shampoo and i wash my hair pretty much every day um, I use my normal shampoo when I'm not using this. I have been using the conditioner just to see how it works. It moisturizes my hair very well, um, but I just don't think that it does enough to justify buying like a specific marketed for blonde hair um, conditioner. Try this out if you haven't ever tried a purple shampoo because I think it's very comparable to a high-end brand that I've been testing, but... I wouldn't really recommend getting the conditioner unless you want to try it, which of course you can. I would recommend if you're really trying to prevent brassiness in your hair, the Christophe Robin um, Baby Blonde Shade Variation Care. This stuff really, really makes a difference. So I recommend getting like a purple shampoo, like the John Frieda, which is very affordable, and then maybe splashing out for a mask that really deposits a good amount of that purple pigment. So this I use once a week, and I wash my hair with whatever shampoo I want, and then I brush it out. So I get out of the shower, I brush out my hair, and then I put this on, or you could put it on in the shower, whatever you want. Um, but leave it on for like 30 to 45 minutes. That's when I've seen the most results from this product, because it says that you can leave it on from five to 30 minutes, and I would say anything under 30 minutes isn't giving it, like, it's not the most bang for your buck. And this is expensive stuff. So I would say do this once every few weeks or once a week or whatever you feel like. And then um, brush out your hair, apply it, rinse it out, and it's like a miracle. It makes the strands like i have some strands that are a lot lighter because my hair color lifted from them better and those strands after i use this are like bright shiny white blonde and it is really really a miracle worker so i would say like the best combination would be the violet shampoo and then the baby blonde mask would be what i would recommend for like those of us with blonde in our hair or if you have like natural blonde hair that can even get um brassy tones so those are just some good products that i've been testing out so the last few things i want to mention are books and so when i was in las vegas i bought um big little lies at the airport because I didn't bring a book and I really regretted it and so I looked through all their books that they had and I really like these small books um I think they're called like mass produced books or something like that there's like a specific name for this style of book and it was so good it is quite not very different from the show but it does have different elements and like it gives you just a better grasp of these characters and a fuller picture of their lives phenomenal i really really recommend the book whether or not you watch the show which i recommend watching the show but if you don't have hbo give the book a shot anyway because it's a great story it's very gripping i read it within like a weekend so you could tell it's a really really good book and i just absolutely loved it the new season of big little lies is fantastic when i'm filming this it's like the day of the third episode being released so i can't wait to watch that tonight and god they are just such good actresses i could watch this show like i wish it was bingeable but at the same time i am glad that it's like 
every week so I can have something to look forward to. It's kind of fun. And then the book that I'm reading currently is Becoming by Michelle Obama. This book has been something I wanted to read for a while and then my grandma let me and my mom borrow it. So I'm about like half, not even halfway. I would say I'm a fourth of the way in and this is so good you guys. She is such a great writer. Like I am amazed at how just gripped I am with this story. I feel like we can appreciate every single person and their life experience if you just give them a chance to tell you about themselves. I love how she tells her own story and she starts from when she's a kid and the point that I'm at is when she's graduated law school and she met Barack and it's just really really a beautiful story. Like there's so many sad parts and then there's so many like happy parts and I am just loving it so much. I can't like I don't even know what the rest of the book is going to be about but um it's in several sections and um now it's the part where it's like becoming us and so it's about her and Barack Obama's relationship and it's just a really really interesting fascinating book and I can't wait to get to the part where like he'll be campaigning for his presidency and just hearing like that side of things I just I'm so fascinated with her perspective and how she tells her story. I think that it's an awesome book. So definitely give it a chance if you haven't read it yet, but if you've been interested, I think it's really awesome. So those are all my favorites for the past month, and I feel like I've been really, really chatty this video. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know what you've been enjoying lately, and I'll see you guys really soon. Bye!